This meeting is being recorded. So welcome everybody to this week's community meeting, um, CubeVert community meeting. It is the 16th of October. Uh, thanks for being here. I have put the uh, gender into chat. Um, if you could please add your name to the attendees right here, uh, something that I often forget to do, um, I would be much obliged. It's always good to know who's, who's attending these. Um, is there anyone here? Having a quick look, I recognize everyone's names. Um, but if anyone would like to introduce themselves and they haven't, despite having attended this meeting um, many, many times, uh, you are more than welcome to introduce yourself. Fair enough. We will have a quick look at the uh, 1.4 schedule. I don't believe anything has changed. And what we have is a feature freeze in less than a week. I believe it's next Tuesday, the 22nd of October. Um, I have heard no reason why that's changed. And we have a GA release of the 12th of November. Boom. Boom. Um, upcoming CFP, I can't remember if I updated this. We have KubeCon EU 2025. Uh, its CFP is open until the 24th of November, so approximately two weeks after KubeCon North America. Um, it will be in London next year. Uh, all right, just to backtrack, uh, Lubo says the beta is running late due to issues in the release process, but we should get green this week. I feel like you said the same thing a couple of weeks ago. Uh, is this just a weird sense of deja vu? It could be, unfortunately. It's, <laughs> you never know how it goes, right? Okay. Fair enough. Uh, what is not in the events? Um, uh, because I, I'm not aware of the dev room being opened yet, but dev room, um, keep your ears peeled for the uh, FOSTEM virtualization room, which was hopefully accepted, um, which will be the 1st and the 2nd of February next year in Belgium. Um, yeah. That is it for the upcoming CFPs that I'm aware of. If you become aware of any CFPs that might be interesting to people in Qbert, please let me know and I can promote them here. All right, Daniel is unable to attend this week. Um, is there anyone here who would like to speak to his point? Vladik, I see your name here. Yeah, sorry, um, I wasn't focused. <laughs> Say it again, please. <clears throat> oh, um, just this point here, uh, Daniel's uh, is unable to attend. Um, I see your name mentioned here, and so maybe you would like to speak to Daniel's point. About pull request triage. Uh, it's not a triage. I think this is a, this is an indication that uh, an approver is needed. I mean, the, um, uh, this is a label that uh, that has been added uh, to any PR that has been um, <clears throat> that has a looks good to me, but uh, was not reviewed by an approver. So, I mean, I I use that label. Um, but pretty much daily already, and uh, it, it it's good. But the thing is that it's uh, it it's always there, um, so we need to remove that label uh, when when the approver is not needed, or maybe the PR is on hold, or maybe uh, maybe the approver already added his thoughts, or you know the PR doesn't go that that way. So I mean, at some point it has to be. Uh, somehow removed, uh, cannot stay there forever. If, if the if the approver already looked at it, and it's gotcha. Uh, 
and currently that is uh, requires manual intervention. Yeah. Gotcha. So you, right. we, can, we can do it in, uh, as a process or we can do it manually, but I mean, we need to decide on something. Black, do you know if the needs approver review label is added automatically? I feel like it is. It is, yeah. It is. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, does anyone have any thoughts on how we handle the removal of this label? I personally would remove once we have an approved uh, approved label. Because today that label re, uh, requiring approval review is uh, when it's le legitimate and um, it fail, I mean, it should be merged basically as an have attention since two weeks. So. For two weeks, so. Am I right in guessing that the um, the reason why we can't just have it merged and have the label sitting there is that it'll then annoy people when they go to search PRs that have that label? As far as I understand, that label is for approver to approve the PRs. And, but if it already has an LGTM and then they approve it, presumably the PR gets merged, right? If it has an approved an LGTM and no old, yes. Or no rebase or stuff like that. So is it that bad? I'm only half playing devil's advocate here. Uh, is it that bad if we don't remove the label? If if the yeah, PR no, gets approved? No, I think until the PR is not merged, uh, we should keep that label. The thing is that uh, you, you don't want that list to be endless. And, and yeah, I mean, people can add LGTM and, and that list will grow. So so basically, the, I mean, the, the idea here was that uh, there will be... Um, you know, just a short list of things that needs attention. Uh, uh, and then that's I, it. I think if if uh, the LGTM label is removed, then we should remove also the approval. Yeah, that, that's what I. That's what. Yeah, I, was I agree. I mean, we already uh, removed the LGTM on a push. We should also remove that one. I think. Uh, okay, so that that currently doesn't happen. The LGTBM can be removed, and this just hangs around at infinitum. Yeah. Gotcha. That makes sense. Does anyone else does anyone else have anything to add to that? Yeah, I think it could be it's probably straightforward just to add this to the automation. That just if there's no LGTM, then remove that approver needed label. Um, and also, if the approve is added, to also remove the label. Um, it, it could run as part of the same automation that's running to add the label. So while we're here, does anyone want to nominate themselves slash volunteer uh, to handle this, to take care of this? Yeah, I could, I could take a look. Um, I'll talk with Daniel as well. It shouldn't take too long. Wonderful. Um, it, are there any circumstances in which if someone approves and we would want to keep the label active for any reason? I don't think so. I mean, to me, this is just an indication for all the approvers to look at the things that are, you know, require attention. So that, that was the, uh, the the main point from the beginning, I think. Yeah, I agree with Vladi. So those PR are basically the one that have already been looked at, um, basically ready to be approved because they have been already 
chat by by a reviewer. Sounds good. All righty. Um, if no one has anything to add to that point, we will move on. Um, oh yeah, the Kubert Unconference. Um, hopefully you're all aware of this. We've talked about it in this meeting before. I sent out a thing to um, the email list. Um, I see a question, that's awesome. Uh, do we need to submit topics? Um, at the moment, um, so here's where we're at. We want to build a couple of Etherpad style um, collaborative documents. Um, um, we're working on that. It is a self-hosted situation. Until they're built, if you can just think of topics, that would be really good. Um, and then we will eventually, um, hopefully with uh, ample time before the event, which is in two weeks time, um, we'll have those documents where people can populate them with topics. Um, this is in the thread, but the idea at the moment is that we're going to have day one, uh, three rooms for SIG compute, SIG network, and SIG storage to really kind of concentrate on, on those topics. They will be run by the SIGs. Um, and so if you have something that uh, it, you know, belongs in any of those rooms, uh, please throw it on their dock when it, when it gets built. Um, with the second day for um, other smaller SIGs slash working groups or any topics that you feel are cross, cross the boundaries between SIGs or don't necessarily fit neatly into any of those uh, three SIG boxes, um, then we'll somehow figure out, uh, self-determine a schedule amongst the, um, the topics that get raised across those, um, across those rooms. Uh, that's the idea. This is the first time we've done this. Um, Hopefully it's not a disaster, and it is a wonderful um, uh, learning experience, but also incredibly productive for all of us. Um, does anyone have any questions? I see a comment in chat. By definition of SIG compute, anything that's not storage or network is compute. Um, I mean, we have other things. Uh, there's, we've got CI. Uh, SIG scale. I feel like the SIG compute charter um, specifies what falls into the SIG, doesn't it? Yeah, I guess my point is like you said, if anything doesn't fall into any SIG, then we can discuss it. But SIG compute is, is literally everything else. So, <laughs> um, well, I, I am more than happy for someone else to, uh, to, to draw the parameters of what um, how to narrow down SIG compute so that it makes sense uh, to everyone else. And since you raised it, Jed, I'm going to ask you to do that. Documentation things, um, you know, there are other things that we do in the community and involved in the project without necessarily deeply into that SIG compute. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, any other uh, questions or concerns? Cool. Um, last week, I believe a, the working group code quality met. I was wondering if uh, anyone that attended that meeting last week is present and can uh, just give us a quick kind of like 10 second TLDR. Um, I was present, so I think quick TLDR is uh, we wanted to to reach an agreement for the scope of the of the working group, and we were not able to make it in time. So uh, we'll try to do it at the next meeting, which will be um, I think two weeks or so after. I think after uh, 
Israeli shutdown and when, when some others come back from video. Cool. Thank you. Um, when is the Israeli shutdown? I think it starts today, doesn't it? Yes. Today is first Sakat Eve, uh, and I'm assuming most Israelis will be out for at least another week. Okay. Um, but they are back before the 29th. Uh, They're yes. out for one week? Uh, let me look it up. One. Thank you. I, I think I, I was looking at this a couple of weeks ago. Um, uh, before the 26th. That sounds right, and that's what I was confirming, but let's go with the 26th, unless I say the way. Okay, cool. By the 27th, 28th. Cool. Thank you, Antonio. Um, similarly, uh, I see a laser on the line. Um, did you want to quickly uh, do a quick uh, 10 seconds about the DRA meeting that we had. Was it yesterday? Yeah. Uh, not sure if I can finish in 10 seconds, but I'll give a 30 second overview. Uh, so the meeting um, yesterday uh, addressed, well, tried to address some issues from the last time, which was why do we need this? Um, why does this proposal, proposal need information in BMI status? So we've brought uh, two additional use cases. They are summarized in the document in the detailed notes. Well, they are summarized in the notes and then details of those are present in detailed notes. So people who missed it, uh, please um, you know, take a look and uh, you know, we can discuss this on the proposal more. Um, <clears throat> there was an additional use case uh, brought up uh, yesterday regarding the life cycle of resource claims. Uh, it seems there is a need for resource claims life cycle to be separate from pods. And it, it looks like the current DRA architecture in Kubernetes ties both of them uh, together. So um, we'll have to uh, you know, bring those use cases to upstream Kubernetes uh, if we want to you know, leverage DRA for that. Otherwise, we'll have to do other things to, to separate the life cycle. So um, that's the summary. We're still looking into the separation of life cycle issue. Uh, we'll update the, the proposal once, um, you know, we have more information. But yeah, cool. uh, the proposal has been updated. Um, I ask um, reviewers to take another look. Uh, and if we need to um, you know, set up another meeting, uh, please reach out. Um, we can set it up for next Tuesday. Awesome, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I think that was 100 seconds, but who's counting? Um, I believe this is the, because there's, there's an old DRA proposal and there's a new DRA proposal. And I believe this is the one everyone should be looking at, right? 331? Uh, yes, that's correct. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, do we have any questions? Alrighty, um, and I think, yeah, you'll send out a um, something on the mailing list if the meeting does indeed go ahead next week or in two weeks or whenever. Yeah, I'll let the mailing list know. Yeah. Thank, thank you very much. Um, our open floor, this is really just a, um, a party popper moment of a design proposal being merged. Uh, so this is from SIG Network. I think I saw Aurel's name on it. Well, he's obviously not here because he's on shutdown. Um, but hooray, a design proposal is merged. So I'll leave that link there. I did not see any 
pull requests that needed attention, uh, if there is an error, um, please holler and put the link there. Uh, mailing list, similarly, the um, everything seemed to be responded to or, or viewed. Um, there were no bugs that needed attention, uh, so I thought this week there were two enhancements uh, which hadn't been um, uh, commented on, so I thought maybe we could take a minute to have a quick look at them. Um, when I started doing this meeting, it, we didn't really look at uh, enhancements. We always just seemed to focus on bugs. Um, I'm not entirely sure why we leave enhancements out in the cold. Presumably it's due to time, but unless anyone objects. Uh, there's a couple of things here. Um, Love Migration being aware of the existing copy on right pages merged by KSM. Um, for some reason, and uh, I wasn't confident enough of this to tag him, but I thought Federico, um, you, you, were the, you were a person who um, was on top of KSM. Am I way off base? Yes, you're right. Uh... Yeah, I think that we need to investigate on it if it's uh, feasible for us. Uh, yeah, I need to read the the publications at least for sure. Awesome, thank you. Um, do you want me to leave this here, or should I CC you in this? Yeah, yeah, feel free to CC me. Awesome. At Uh, what have I done? F O. F O. That's right. Thank you. One day I'll get it. And this one. Oh, the chase beaten me to it. Can you guys hear me? Hello. Yes. Hi. Hi, Henry. Uh, I actually wanted to say something about the um, uh, live migration thingy. Yeah, um, this, I mean, from a first look, this looks more like a feature that we would have to first enable in Libver, Libver QM, uh, you know, that stack. So I'm not sure if anyone knows if this is possible already, because Giver doesn't do anything by its own. So, I, I stayed silent because I wasn't completely clear what the mission here is, but it seems kernel same page merging is about noting that pages are identical between different processes and just not making extra copies. I don't have the foggiest clue what the heck that means if you're migrating to a new node. I, 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 I would assume I that if to... KSM is enabled on the far node, that if the pages then overlapped, it would just start working again, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's a matter of like working or not working. Maybe what they want to achieve is like copy less if some pages have been merged. Like instead of copying the same page twice, like just be aware that it's uh, it's the same page and KSM merged it, so you don't copy it twice. Maybe that's. My understanding. Same um, where? Uh, on the on the same node or on both nodes? Yeah, no. Exactly, but, uh, No, I think I think this is coming from the source. Like, but yeah, right. I don't but you, know. But you'd need a copy on both the source and the destination that are identical to know that you could skip it, and that's weird because how do you know that? Uh, it, it's no, like you'd I, have to be you'd have to be pre science to know that the page is already like redundant. No, I'll, I'll, I'll rephrase it better. Like, I think what he's asking for is that, for example, if you have a VM that's, you know, living on the source, of course, in source node, and it's got like 10 pages, which are the same page, so they've been merged by the KSM, by KSM, you don't transfer to the target the same, the same 10 pages, but somehow you tell the target, hey, uh, I just transferred this once, and I'll... Tell your KSM that the 10 pages are the same page. 
But I don't think the Linux kernel has an API to do that. And I don't think Libvirt or QM or KVM are able to do this. So, I mean. Right. I, I disagree with what you said, Antonio, because uh, it's not just about the page being merged on the source. It's about the fact that the page will be again merged on the destination and we know then we can skip it. You can't just blindly skip because it was merged on the source because it might not be on the destination. You might have different processes. So you need you need at least one copy. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's not what I was saying. Like I'm saying that you just transfer it once. Like if you have 10 pages, like 10 4K pages that you have to migrate over to the target, you migrate it just once and then you tell the target KSM, hey, these are the same pages, please be aware of it. So the kernel knows that they point to the same actual uh, physical I, page. I think but it works. Okay, I think KSM actually works different. If you if you have ten pages that are uh, com that are skipped because they're duplicates elsewhere, what it means is like you have some other process that's completely unrelated to yours on the same node that's got the same page. It's not it's not a repeated page within your own process. It's a repeated page to a completely different PID and a completely different namespace that you don't even know about. That's where the kernel can do, that has to be a kernel level thing because nothing else has the permission or privilege to be able to pull that off. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't think the kernel is such a, they have such an API like to do this complica complicated stuff. Like this has to be orchestrated by, uh, you know, KVM first using the kernel API. So, and then I don't think they thought of this because maybe it's not even that useful. Uh, sorry, guys. Yeah, uh, there is actually a paper uh, linked to that, so that might be what, exactly what uh, the kernel work. This All is right, Andrew, we have successfully derailed your meeting. <laughs> I'll shut up. But anyway, what what I wanted to say is that I don't think this is a Kubert. Uh, this should be a Kubert feature request. Um, this is just outside the scope of Kubert. We can use an API if it exists. We can do. We cannot do this. Fair enough. Um, in which case, uh, does someone want to go through this paper and? Um, write a response along those lines to the issue to this, whether it's uh, Federica, Antonio, anyone else? Yeah, yes. I can, I can comment. I mean, I can just say that, you know, whenever that API will come up and deliver QM, we can use it. That's it. All righty. Well, thanks for weighing in. I'm glad we went through these uh, enhancements. Um, and for this one, LHA has tagged Alexander and also said in chat, it was asked in Slack and it's being tracked this issue. So that takes care of that. I'll have a quick look at the flaky tests. Um, if anyone has anything else they'd like to add to the agenda before we finish up, uh, now's a good time to do it. Um, ooh, that's last week. We have some fixes, maybe. And I think the top one there is a, is a relevant fix for this week, which is good. Um, yeah, there's a fake that we saw in the storage lanes that looks to be fixed by... Alexander. Awesome. It's got an LGTM. Just seems that a just seems that approval label. Thank you, Alexander.
So that brings us to the end of this meeting, as far as I can tell. Um, before we depart, does anyone have anything they'd like to throw in at the last minute before we finish up? In which case, uh, I'll leave you with 16 minutes uh, to spare to go and do whatever you want. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us, for um, engaging in lively debate, for taking care of PRs and bugs before this meeting so we don't have to go through them in the meeting, um, and for everything else. Thanks a lot. hope you all have a wonderful week, weekend, and we'll see you next time. Bye, y'all. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you.